Uh, I have a probably a huge testimony about the journey that I have taken to come to the place to teach to you what I'm about to teach to, to you now. I have uh, probably for 40 years have heard people teach about the second coming of the Lord and I was confused and I was afraid and there were times I didn't know whether I was even going to heaven. I want to make sure you guys understand if you are born again and you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you're heaven bound. This past Wednesday, I taught on the reality of hell. That was a message for unbelievers. <laughs> but if you're born again, uh, and we talk about the judgment seat of Christ, you've already been judged. There's, there will never be a period, a, a, a season, there'll never be a, a time where men can be forgiven and live by the grace of God. Never, not anymore. It, and, we, and when that's done, never, ever again. And so, as you hear this, I want you to hear it with great rejoicing. You are not citizens of, you know, this earth. You're citizens of heaven. In fact, if the truth be told, you are an alien here. They're looking for some extraterrestrials. Here we go, you know. So, uh, so I stayed away from it. I, I didn't want to teach it. I heard all this weird stuff, and I'm just like, last thing I want to do is, is teach it wrong. And, and recently, the Lord began to deal with me, and, and, and he said, you know, I'm going to show you how to teach this. And I'm like, Lord, how? He said, like you do everything else, in line with my word. Just search the scriptures. I'll speak to you, and you ain't got to do no weird interpretations. Just say what I've already said about it. Don't add to or take away. Just say what I've already said about it. He said, it is time for my people to renew their mind in the great hope of the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen? So I call this series with a question, are you ready uh, for the return of Jesus Christ? Because uh, I'll show you some things today that uh, kind of identify where we are. But let's start off in the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. I'm going to look at Hebrews 9, 28, and then Psalms 34, 4 through 5. This is our text for this series of sermons. I don't know how far I'll get today, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang in here. Somebody says, well, why would you be teaching this? So you can get ready. A lot of things you won't do if you're focused on what's about to happen, okay? A lot of things, you know, I'll show you a scripture where the Bible says that the grace of God will teach you how to live right so that you can be prepared for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, look at this in verse 28. Let's read it out loud. If you have your Bibles ready, read. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time Now, now, look at this in the NLT. So, those who look for him, and I don't know if there are a lot of even Christians that look for him because over the years, this has been, has been accounted as a fable. Over the years, it's, 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 it's something that people don't talk about. Over the years, you have scoffers who say, well, he's not going to come. How come? I got, we're going we're gonna to deal with all of that. The, the Bible talks about all of that stuff that would happen. The things that are going on today were in the Bible thousands of years ago. He says in NLT, so also, also Christ was offered. How many times was Christ offered? Once for all times as a sacrifice to do what? To take away the sins of many people. All right? He says, he will come again. He will come again. See, we used this scripture when we were talking about grace and showed you how you were delivered. He will come again. Your sins have already been taken away. He will come again. But not to deal with our sins. Why is he not coming again to deal with our sins? Because he's already dealt with them, right? He will come again. 
not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. And now he's talking about complete salvation where you get your glorified body. He will come again. So what are we supposed to do with that? Tear it out and act like it's not in the Bible? He will come the second time. He will come again. Now look at this in Psalms 34, verses 4 through 5. I want to look at it in the King James and then the NIV. Psalms 34, 4 through 5. He says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Now, look at this in the NIV, 4 and 5, same, same verse. Wow. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. I'm telling you, I am looking for the return of the Lord. There is something about the Christian that's in expectation of his return. Now, remember he said, I've delivered you from fear. A lot of Christians don't look for his return because they're in fear. Oh, but what if I'm not ready? Oh, but what if I did this? And oh, what about my past? Jesus, he took away all that. Jesus, Jesus, listen, the only thing you got to do to be saved is, is, is to make Jesus the Lord of your life, accept his forgiveness, accept his sacrifice, and you're there. You're, you're not perfect now, nor will you ever be perfect until he changes you. Amen. Stop that tomfoolery. You're always going to have something to work on. But when you saved and you know it, you are looking for the return of the Lord. I am, <laughs> I don't know where we were, uh, maybe I think it was Wednesday or something, and, and, and we heard this little slight something that sounded like a trumpet or something. I don't know what, what it's a Bible study, wasn't it? I don't, I don't know what that was, but we were ready. I'm like, well, it, the, I'm thinking the trumpet ain't as loud as what I thought it was, but <laughs> I was looking up because I was ready to go. And for every Christian, that should be a point of excitement, not a point of fear. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. Jesus Christ is going to appear the second time. Now, Jesus is coming again. Now, now here, here we go. I'm going through the Scripture. How can you say that? It's in the Bible. Look at the New King James Bible. Uh, in, uh, let's look at John 14, verses 2 through 3. John 14, 2 through 3. Why are you giving so many scriptures? Because it's not been taught a lot, and you need to know where it is. You need to know where it is. I, I, my objective here is not so I can preach so awesome so you can give me a 10. We need to know this. There's something powerful that's going to happen in your life as a result of you knowing that it's in the Bible. Look at this, John 14, Verses 2 through 3, he says, In my Father's house, Jesus is speaking here, are many mansions. If it were not so, he said, I would have told you that it was not so. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Somebody say, that's me. <laughs> and if I go and prepare a place for you, watch this, I will come again. I will come again. I will come again, and I will receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, the church spent so much time fussing about the word rapture, where you know the Bible, the rapture ain't even in the Bible. I don't need to see no word rapture. Right here he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming back for you. Now, you call it what you want to, here he is, I will come again. He's coming. He's coming sooner than we think. Amen. Glory be to God. It's in the Bible. Jesus is coming again. Now, now here, here, are the, here are the things that hopefully I can deal with effectively today. There are signs of Jesus' second coming. There are signs. Look at Luke 21, 
verses 29 through 31 in the New King uh, James Version. Luke 21, 29 through 31. There are signs of Jesus' second coming. Look at 29, 30, and 31. He says, then he spoke to them a parable. He said, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see, and you know for yourselves that summer is now near. We know that, right, in the natural. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. So there are some things that are going to happen that Jesus says, just like when you see the trees bud, you know that summer is near. I'm going to give you some signs to look at to know that I am near. Does everybody understand that? So the next obvious question is, what are some signs? What are some signs? Well, it's, it's in the Bible. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. What are some signs that, that the Bible here talks about? Matthew 24, and let's start at verse 3, and then I'll, I'll read on here. He says, and, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? Now, he coming. He coming. Now, the Bible says, no man knows the day nor the hour, not even the Son of Man. Only God knows. All right, so, this is what this means. If I were to get up and prophesy to you that God is coming tomorrow, I'm automatically wrong. Why? Because it says, don't no man know. So, you don't need to be listening where they said he was coming before, where if you'd have read the Scriptures, you'd have known that they were lying because don't no man know. Not even the angels in heaven know. So, if somebody tell you a date that Jesus is going to come, he is absolutely not going to come on that date. So don't be going buying stuff and all that other kind of stuff. I can promise you, if any human being announces that Jesus is coming on a particular day and a date, I guarantee you, if I was a betting man, I'd bet, I'd bet $10,000 that day. I'd, I'd, get, I'd, get, I'd get rich off of you that day. <laughs> He's not coming because no man knows the day or the hour, and we'll run into that Scripture as we go. But he said, what's the sign of thy coming? And what's the sign of the end of the age? Uh, not, not the world, but the, the, the age. So, we want to take some time to look at this now. Uh, and then look at verse 4 and 5, and here's where we'll take off, verse 4 and 5. He says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, so he's going he's gonna to talk to us about some signs, guys. He's not going to leave us completely in the dark. He's going to talk to us about some things to look at. He says, and Jesus said, uh, answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. How many of you know deception is great, right? Deception is so big. There's some things that I know I can't even tell you. Deception is huge. It's humongous. And he says, Be careful that you're not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So the first sign is that many will come in, your, in his name. Now, I, I, what I did was I went to uh, several sources, uh, Wikipedia, some other sources, to actually see if I can find some, some data on the signs. Now, I'm sure that the data is probably much larger. Like I found uh, a stat that said that rape, that, the, that America was leading in, 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 in the cases of rape around the world. I, I don't know if I believe that. I believe it might be other places like Africa because they're not reporting everything. And even in the United States, not all of it is being reported. So I, I want you to look at something even greater than what I'm going to show you. I want, we're, we're, we're looking for frequency and intensity because he compared his return uh, to a woman who was having birth pains 
And if you know a woman will have birth pain, the first pain doesn't mean the child's coming. Not even the second one. But it is measured in frequency and intensity. So you've heard of earthquakes happening. You've heard of, of all these things happening. But what he says is, watch out when it becomes more frequent and more intense. Look up. Your redemption draweth near. Okay? All right, and uh, so we're looking at this, this list. So let's look at, and, and I, uh, if we have a transparent, uh, a list of, of, of people that claim to be Jesus. Uh, let's put that up on the screen so people can, can see, just follow me along with some of these stats. There have been uh, 75 uh, fakes, 12, which or maybe 16% are living right now. And this is according to Wikipedia. There, there, have, there have been 75 people who have claimed that they were Christ and showed up with some, some tricks to try to deceive. And of those 75, 16% are living right now today. So this is not like, well, that hadn't happened. Now, I'm not talking about just obvious people who hadn't been called. I'm talking about, I'm talking about people who, have, who said that they're Christ and they got weird signs and wonders following them. Now, if you haven't read your Bible correctly, do you know the devil can do some weird signs and wonders? All the way back to Egypt when the magicians put their rods down and they were turned into snakes. Uh, but Moses put his down and... And somebody said, well, he, how do we know he's not a musician? Then that snake ate up the other two. I'm like, oh, look who dominated. <laughs> but that's already taking place. We're sheltered in the United States of America, and you don't see some of the stuff I myself have seen traveling to places, real voodoo. You, you see stuff. You see stuff. Even when, when Samuel died, Saul went to a woman who stood between the, uh, uh, the living and the dead, and Saul broke his own rule and said, could you tell Samuel to come back? I got to ask him something. And, and she did it, and Samuel said, why did you disturb me? What I told you before I died is still going to happen. He said, in fact, you and your son going to be with me tomorrow. <laughs> See, you, you don't get all that. You, you, you're listening to, 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 to the propaganda of the news and you don't understand stuff like that really happens around the world. You've never seen somebody really demon-possessed. Tavin, I have. I was in, um, oh, what island we were on, and this woman was possessed with demons. And she came towards me, man of God, man of God, counsel me. Well, I was in the middle of burnout. I was in the worst condition of depression I'd ever had before. And my wife recognized that that was a demon. And she turned around, she said, in the name of Jesus, you foul devil, I cast you away from me now. I don't even, listen, the, the lady, the, it was a straight street. The lady was running down the street and she had disappeared. I don't even know what happened. You, you ain't never seen nothing like that. You think all that stuff is fable and stuff, but there are fake Christ showing up performing little tricks, because you know how we are. We still in a situation where if, if, if a guy got up just to win you over, he would go to your Facebook page, trace somebody he know to find who you are, get three or four people, call your name out and give your address, and you start shouting because he knew your address. All he did was go to Facebook and get it. <laughs> See, y'all still playing church. This is play stuff over here. But when you get to places like, where's that place we went and, and 17, 20,000 people showed up and half of them were demon-possessed? Uh, Budapest. Budapest. I walked in a place to preach. We, we, you talking about, we, we, it wasn't no, where we, oh, you just saying they demon-possessed. You could see it, couldn't you? You had never seen that like that before in my life. You can see it. And I'm standing up here, and, and, and at one time I just got mad at the devil and I said, Satan, silence! Jesus. And it got quiet for a minute. 
And then they started talking again. I said, we, we got to get up out of here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it time to go. <laughs> Fake Christ. Now look at verse 6 and 7. He says, and you shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. I love this part. He says, see that you be not troubled. You know what he said? You see that you be not troubled. You're going to hear of wars, rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. So you can't cast this out. You can't bind it in the name of Jesus. You can't get all the intercessors together to make this stop. You can cast out devils, but you can't cast out prophecy. Amen. Certain things going to happen. You just got to make sure you see to it that you're not troubled because you accept the peace of God. You accept the Holy Ghost. You accept the presence of God. See to it that you're not troubled, but trouble's been prophesied to come and you can't stop it. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations. The actual Hebrew, Greek word there is ethnos, which talks about ethnic groups around the word rising against ethnic groups, and kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. Now, now the first and the most important point I want you to, to, get, 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 to get and to give your complete attention to is that even with the bad news in these first several prophecies that we see, Jesus tells us not to be troubled. That's what I want you to focus on. Focus on, I am not going to be troubled. Say it. <laughs> the only way we will not feel worried or downtrodden or disturbed by the news of war, disease, and earthquakes and you've heard all of that, but that's not the key. But Jesus said, you make sure you're not troubled. Uh, iniquity will abound, and you'll begin to experience and see things like you've never seen before. But we've got to get the peace of God in our lives, and we've got to understand what the peace of God is all about, and we've got to understand why God wants us to to, to walk in this peace. We've got to have unshakable faith in him who's faithful. And, and we've got to understand, I think, in um, John chapter 10, write this down, John chapter 10, verse 27 through 29, he talks about his children that we're in the palm of his hands. We're in the palm of his hands. Say that, I'm in the palms of Jesus' hands. Psalm 61 Verses 1 through 5, Psalm 62, verses 6 through 8, he says, When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. See to it that you be not troubled. He only is my rock. He is my salvation. And if we only believe that, if we receive those things, those promises that God has given to us, you, that's how you see that you be not troubled. You, you go to what the Word has to say about you you see that you be not troubled. Now, let's look at uh, verse 6 through 7. He said, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, I looked up some stuff in Wikipedia on the ongoing armed conflicts. <clears throat> and if you only count uh, the conflicts, uh, only counting conflicts with at least 100 deaths. So this is stats with at least 100 deaths in the past two years. They reported that there are 32 wars involving 64 countries right now. You ain't heard about all of them. When I'm in another nation, there's something going on in that nation, and they're not even broadcasting the news at home. 32 wars involving 64 countries right now, and a low-end estimate is more than 12 million casualties in the past 50 years. 12 million. Action News is not going to report that to you. 
Now, let's go on to verse 7. <clears throat> he says, For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in different places. Now, in verse 7, there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes. Now, again, from uh, the source, the Wikipedia source, since 1980 to present, there are approximately 3 million people have starved to death. That's just recorded. I believe it's way more than that. 3 million people starved to death. And during the 20th century alone, there's an estimate between 70 to 100 million people that died from famine. In fact, Ethiopia just reported 500 and some thousand people right now are suffering in famine. That's what he said. Pestilence. Pestilence. All right, so now, pestilence is, is deadly diseases. That's what he's talking about. Now, <clears throat> Since AIDS began in 1920s, a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> Since AIDS began in 19, 1920s up to the present date, there have been 36 million people to die of AIDS. Anybody remember the Ebola virus of 2012? 12,913 fatalities. And then when you look at cases of malaria, uh, the measles, hepatitis, uh, B, influenza, you look at those, he says the total of 1.5 million, more than 1.5 million people have died from that. And then according to the CDC, uh, from the late 2019 to our present, you know this, the corona virus global pandemic has claimed more than one million lives. Why am I showing you this? This is pestilence. Now, now you're thinking, oh, when the coronavirus is over, we return back to normal. No, there's not, not, you're not going back. It's going to accelerate. I don't know what's coming next, but this, is, this was the dressing up stage for what is to come. It is, it, it is accelerating. It's not going to go back and no more. That's why they need a prophet in the White House. You ain't going back in no more. There, there's something else that's on the horizon. He also talked about earthquakes. Now, this, this, this here is very interesting. Here I want you to notice, just look, we started in 1990, and these numbers are only those that were at least 6.0 magnitude and up. So, you know, you had smaller ones, but the ones that were recorded. And again, like I said, th these are the ones that were at least six point magnitude and up. And if you go every 10 years, look at the progression, intensity, and frequency. And he says, well, you see in 1900s to 1909, 288 earthquakes. All right. 1910 to 19, uh, 1919, 323. 1920 to 1929, 315. 1930 to 1939, 378. 1940 to 1949, 466. 1950 to 59, 451. From the 60s, 1960 to 1969, 655. 1970, 1979, 1031. Do you see the birth pains increasing? 1980 to 1989, 1,111. 1990 to 1999, 1,4986. 2,000, Five times more. It's not going to go back to 288. It's not going back to 150. It's going to keep going forth. Jesus prophet, it was prophesied that it's going to happen 
And that's another thing. Notice Jesus is the one talking about what's going to happen. And he said to watch the intensity of it. Now, let's look at Matthew 24, 8 and 9. So, when you're listening to the news, you know, and, 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 and when, you're, when your grandmother say, times, times show have changed, they have. Something's about to be born. And we're going around here lollygagging, listening to the world. I was, I was uh, on, I think it was 4th of July. I, I turned my car on and was switching through the radio station, and, and, I, and I heard this rap song, and I, and I, I just challenged myself. I'm saying, let me see what they're saying. Because I never, I mean, I can't understand no. <laughs> and so I tuned into what they were saying. I, I couldn't even get through the, through the song. I couldn't believe what they were saying. They were licking everything. I, I was like, that's a long way from bet your mind, golly, you won. That's a long, long way from that. Yeah, times have changed. Demonic activity like never before. Why are people murdering folks. See, when you were used to drive on the highway, about the worst you could get is somebody to shoot a bird at you when you did something wrong. Now, you do something, they might pull a gun on you. you it's crazy out there. Somebody said, what's happened? Please understand something. The pandemic, and we locked ourselves away, and not everybody locked themselves away with daily confessions. Not everybody locked themselves away knowing Jesus. Not everybody locked themselves away with the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of them locked themselves away with demonic spirits who were oppressing them and depressing them and on them. And, and, and they, when they came out, they had yielded more to those demons than they ever knew. And some of them don't even know. Look at the pictures of the people that they catch that committed a mass murder. Their eyes are still glazed. They don't even know what's going on. But because the church no longer believes in demons and angels in heaven and hell, don't believe in nothing, Satan said, yeah. Why, y'all, you who with the authority don't believe, now I can just wreck up some stuff because I got Christian people not believing that I exist. So that gives me the freedom to do all kinds of stuff and just ruin people. You wonder what's going on? There's stuff that's happening. When I first got into the ministry the first 10 years, Ken and I came up together, casting out demon was like an every month situation. They're sitting, they want to talk. I went in this lady's house one time. She was down to cancer, but I knew it was by the power of a demonic force. And she was sitting on the edge of her bed. It was iron like a bird. And I walked in the room. It was crazy that night because it was thundering and lightning outside, just like a real movie. I'm like, oh, heck now. <laughs> you know, white folks like to investigate. Black people, they run when they see somebody else running without even knowing why you're running. <laughs> You know, we don't do that. When we hear the music, ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> we pivot. <laughs> My white brothers and sisters, what is that? <laughs> you ever been around somebody, they start running, you didn't even know they run like, I'm running too, whatever, you know. <laughs> I walked in this room. And the lights were flickering, flickering on and off, and it was thundering and lightning outside. And this little bit, she was about 90 pounds. Little bit of light-skinned woman. When I walked in the door, she said, I know you. I said, oh. <laughs> I had to wipe the chills off, you know. The fear tried to come in. I'm like, oh. And then I realized, that's a pretty good thing. I said, that's Bible. Yeah. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? Yeah. They tried to go in there. They didn't know God, didn't know Jesus, wasn't saved. They tried to go in there and cast those demons out, book of Acts, in the name of the Paul, of the Jesus that Paul preached. And the demons were like, ah, and when they heard that, uh, huh? And then they stopped and they said, now, wait a minute. Uh, Paul, we know. 
Jesus, we know. But who are you? And the Bible says those demons jumped on them, stripped their clothes off, and ran them out the house. What are you saying, Pastor Dollar? Make sure every devil in hell knows you by name. Make sure every devil in hell knows you by name. So I walked in there and I said, yeah, I know you know me. And I know you know the Jesus I serve. Cast you out. It, it's amazing how many times we did that at the beginning of this church, when this church started. And it's amazing how demons have been able to hide away from that authority through religion. Because if you don't know it, there are religious demons. See, some of y'all freaking out right now like, oh, Jesus. Now, you shouldn't have no fear coming in you because you saved. And the Bible says in Luke 10, 19, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil, and nothing shall by in any means hurt you. You're the redeemed of the Lord. Shouldn't be no fear in here unless the devils don't know you because God don't know you. The devil ought to know everybody God knows. Wish you would manifest yourself. I'm, I'm hungry to do it. A lot of us, a lot of us who used to do that all the time, we will cast, we will free your butt. We will deliver you like you ain't never been delivered before. It's going to happen. Those demons are now trying to manifest because they know that something's coming. They know it, but Christians don't know it. How is it that the devils know that something's coming and Christians don't know? So Satan is trying to intensify his attack and we walking around here, you know, don't know if we of Jesus of other world. You walking around here, I, 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 the church, blaming the church for everything. Blaming the church for everything. That's another thing. Every time something happened to you, the church, the church. Now, I might have been some people in the church, but quit blaming the church. What about your side? What about the stuff you did or didn't do? What about the style you were carrying yourself? What about you don't never pray? You don't never get in the Word? You don't never come to church? You don't want to have nothing to do with God? But then when your life mess all up, all of a sudden, it's the church. Church ain't did nothing to you church hurt. You hurt yourself. You got hurt because you kept trying to go out with Ray Ray and the Holy Ghost was trying to tell you that Ray Ray wasn't no good, but you can't hear the Holy Ghost because you occupied in your mind with all kinds of other stuff and God was trying to help you, but he can't help those who don't want no help. So quit blaming the church. And then you go around and try to find another church as if you're going to find a perfect church. You ain't going to find no perfect church because the church is made of imperfect people. Starting with yourself. I, I apologize. Forgive me. Forgive me. I got emotional. Don't ever seem to tell the other side of your church hurt. I can tell you about hurt. Betrayal, I can tell you about betrayal. But I ain't gonna let nobody run me out of my call. It is no longer, Lord, where you want me to be. It's now searching for where I can perform and lift my image up. What about does God want you to? Because your provision go be in the place where God called you. Mm. 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 There might be a reason why it ain't working out. It worked out where he called you. But you're in the wrong place. He sent deliverance where he called you, but you're in the wrong place. The ideas and the wisdom and the prosperity was where he called you. Y'all ain't going to like me. 
But I love every last one of y'all, but I told you once, I told you once, I'll tell you again, I'm already used to preaching to a bunch of empty chairs. I did it for six, fifth, uh, 12, 13 months. I'm good. But I am not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I am not going to be ashamed of talking the truth, and I'm not going to be ashamed of teaching this lesson. Jesus is on his way back. Jesus will return. That is my great hope. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord and the King of Kings. He's coming back, I tell you. See, I don't know if you understand, first time he came, he came as a lamb. The lamb gone. Next time he coming back as a roaring lion with a sword in his hands. And guess who's going to be coming with him? Those of you who are born again shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Let me explain something to you. I don't know if I've ever explained. The return of the Lord is in two parts. There is the first part, which is the appearing of the Lord in the air where he won't touch down. He won't put a foot on the earth. There's a meeting in the air where he's, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. There's a meeting in the air. The first resurrection, he's going he to wake up. Get a Bahasha. He's going to wake up everybody that is asleep in Christ. Everybody that, that's born again and got saved by grace and they sleep in Christ right now, he's going to wake up and, and he's going to call them to meet him in the air. So that means a lot going to be going on in the earth that day. Some people have had their ashes spread over in the sea, so the sea going to have to reel and rock like a drunk man. Shout out. Some people were put in the vaults and, and cement and stuff on top of it. So there's going to be a lot of cracking and, and a lot of thumping and a lot of boom and stuff going on because the dead in Christ shall rise. Now, what about those of us who hadn't died yet and we're saved? He said, first of all, let me wake them up. And then those of you who remain, who are alive and remain, watch this shall be changed. Oh, my God. What is it talking about shall be changed? Your mortal body is going to put on your immortal body just like the, the ashes are going to have to come together and put on their immortal body. Glory to God. And so you're going to be changed first in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. You're not going to be able to wash up, put deodorant on nothing. You're going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. And the Bible says, and you shall be caught up Now watch this. Then we all going to go away for a minute. Check out the beauty of, of, this, of this complete salvation. You saved now, but it ain't complete until you get your supernatural body. And then when Jesus comes back for a battle called Armageddon, which will take place in the Middle East, the blood would be as high as the horse's bridle Guess who, guess who, guess, guess who, who the army going to be? <laughs> this will be the battle to defeat the false prophet, to defeat the Antichrist who will now be on earth, who is already on earth right now. Somebody says, how you knowing on earth? Well, listen out for these words, peace, peace, peace. With peace he shall deceive many. Yeah. But we're coming back to defeat the Antichrist, the devil, all demons will be locked in the hell that was prepared for them. And then there'll be the second death or the second resurrection. 
that's where everybody who wasn't saved is going to be raised up. And I guess God's going to judge them by their works. That's another sermon, but the one you needed to hear is where you at right now. You don't know nothing about this, but 35, 40 years ago, my mama know, some of the others know, church used to sing songs like that. You remember, there's a storm cloud on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away, drift away, drift away. You will surely drift away if your soul's not anchored in Jesus. You will surely drift away. <laughs> you should see some of these younger people. They sound like. If you save, you should not be scared one bit. If you're not saved, this ought to scare the hell out you. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Somebody said, I didn't cuss. Hell is a real place. All right, look at this. All right, 8 and 9, Matthew 24, 8 and 9. He says, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted. They shall kill you, and you shall be hated for my name's sake. So, according to Open Doors USA, the most recent figure available to show <clears throat> Christian deaths that were moderate, 2,983 Christian moderate deaths in, 19, in 2019. And then look at verse 12. Verse 12, let's read on down a little bit more. He said, and because iniquity shall wax cold or shall, sin shall abound. Sin is going to increase. Can't nobody doubt that. It has already increased. It's crazy out there. Sin shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Wow. So, from this source, on drugs and crime worldwide, in 2018, there were 874,000, over 874,000 people who were murdered intentionally, an in intentional homicide. Consider the inhumanity of human trafficking. In 2019, and I, like I said, I think this is much larger, there were over 1.2 million cases of violent crimes. And I know they reported America being the number one case, cases in rape in the world, but I think that's probably, they're probably up there, but up with other nations as well, I guarantee you, because you talk about the rape that happens in Africa when Taffy had a chance to visit uh, a women's shelter and the stories that we were, oh, it was, they were terrible. The, the stories that were told were terrible. They were terrible. I want you to know we had an opportunity to support that shelter financially. Women who couldn't get away, they were raped daily. I'm not talking about, oh, from 12 years maybe. Oh, sex trafficking that people don't even appear to care about. It's not that hard. Set up some stuff with self-trafficking. Use some technology to trace some folk. Look out for these white vans yourself. Do something. Don't just give me numbers. 
It'd be one thing if your daughter got kidnapped and you didn't see it no more and got shipped over to another side of the world somewhere. And then legal abortions from 1973 to 2011. 2011, they quit counting. How many of you know God is still counting? Amen. 53 million children. There's a lot going on. But it all says this, Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Look at, uh, while we're in Matthew 24, move on down to verse 23. You'll find this in verse 23. Uh, men posing as Jesus will try to deceive people in the last days, as I mentioned, but look at this verse here in the NIV. Matthew 24, 23 through 24 in the NIV, he says, At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, well, there he is. Do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect if it were possible. So here's the deal. It's like Christian people don't even know that. You're so quickly drawn by a false Christ because he performs a sign or miracle. And the key to it is you're not listening to what they're saying. They're not speaking in line with the Word. And there's no peace in the Holy Spirit. You can go online right now and you can see all these miracle things that are supposedly happening. And I'm telling you, I remember in the, was this, this 90s or 80s or something where some guy was supposed to raise somebody from dead, and that was a whole planned out thing. I could not believe somebody would do that. I couldn't believe that a saved person could plan that whole thing out just to get their ministry going. Videotaped it and everything. And I just, and, and that stuff's going on all over the place. But then there are some look like genuine miracles, and some of them are, you, you see what the Scripture just says, that they will perform great signs and wonders to deceive. There will be signs and wonders, but it'll be signs and wonders to deceive. Somebody raised from the dead, and then they'll tell you something that's not scriptural. The Word is your sure word of prophecy. And if you don't know the Word, you're going to be deceived by these great signs and wonderful. He says this was possible, even the elect, but the elect should know. And so I've seen them empty people's church, go over to the false Christ church because there were signs and wonders, and then I've seen whole families messed up and destroyed because they were following the signs and wonders instead of following the Word. Amen. And that's going to increase. You're going to think it's okay. Oh, let me go over here because that guy did a sign and he did a wonder. When I started the New York church, it was a bunch of people that were coming together who were being deceived by a guy who did signs and wonders. But his life and how he treated people, it was a sure, sure sign. That ain't God. God don't treat people like that. And I went up there and ran them away. Ran him away. That boy shake every time he come around me. I'm like, what, what you nervous for? <laughs> oh, I just, I just know you're, 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 you're just, you're just a, such, a, such a great man of God. And you're a devil, aren't you? Yep. I said, you leave these people alone. You let these people go. He thought he would deceive me with his money. Oh, I have money, and I'm going to buy you this, and I'm going to buy you that. And I'm like, I don't want nothing you, you got. You thought, you, could, you thought I was that kind of preacher you could buy your way a position. I smell a demon somewhere. You better get to know God, and you better get to know him through his word. You better get to know him through a sure word of prophecy, and when stuff happens that don't line up with the word, you automatically know that ain't God because God said that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. God and his word are the same. Amen. And you keep following something. You're going to leave the church God called you to and go to a church because they told you your address. 
Oh, I hear the Lord said, there's a, there's a Nadine Iturububush. Ah, yeah, uh, uh, Nadine, it starts with a T. T. Taylor, yeah, Nadine Taylor, you live at 2105 um, Oakwood, I, South Carolina. Is that right? Yes, yes, and you shouting because they gave you your address. You ain't get healed, you ain't get delivered, you ain't get no direction. All you got was something you already knew, your address. <laughs> It's amazing to me how people are just so hungry for something cheap. And we want the cheaper instead of the deeper. I ain't doing that. I ain't gonna play no church. I gotta see Jesus. You think I'm gonna sit over and play with this? These people gonna fall dead. You think I'm gonna play with this? And every time I'm around one of them, it's amazing how they change it. Where your miracles at? Do your miracles. I had one time, one guy came and laid hands on everybody else and skipped me. Why you ain't lay hands on me? I wanted to play. Why you ain't laying hands on me? Because you, you know I know. I'm sitting up there listening to all that stuff. You done preached the whole sermon and then used one scripture. What you talking about? And the stuff you said ain't in the Bible. And then you stopped and gave somebody their address. I said, let me go see this. What's their name? Man, right there on Facebook. I guess they said, well, he's not only an on-time God, he's an online God. Let me go see him. <laughs> Be careful. If it were possible, even the very elect. Well, I don't know about Creflo Dog. Creflo Dog been doing that for 40 years. Don't come talking to me about some little, 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 little old joker that just got started and ain't been at that but for two years. When he get 40 years, then come talk to me. 40, you know how long it is to maintain a stance when people dogging you out, talking about you, slandering you, doing that, and you keep showing up over and over and over and over and over again? The appearing of Jesus is at hand. He's about to appear. The birth pains are getting closer and closer, more consistent and consistent. Famine, because the rain and then the fire, and then the flood, because the vegetation is not where it used to be. And then the inflation, and then the shortage of food. Y'all don't, do you, do you not see what's coming? And ain't no telling how many lies the government has allowed to come on you. And you ain't got no clue. You believe everything you hear when the Spirit of God is in you to tell you the truth and you violate the Holy Ghost in you. Because what they said, who is they? What well, they said that, they said that. What the Holy Ghost said? The Bible says let peace rule in your heart as an umpire. The great appearing of the Lord is at hand. I'll, I'll show you this probably next week, but the scoffers will say, oh, they've been saying he's coming back for the longest. He ain't came back yet. Why? I mean, can I answer that right quick? I'll show it to you in Scripture later. Because he loves you so much. He wants as many people 
to get it right. So he keeps smashing, delay, delay it, delay it. Hold on. I feel like Frank getting ready to come. Hold on. Hold on. I got a plan. I got somebody coming by his way. I'm sending some believers across his path. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It ain't enough in. I got to get some more people in. I got to, I got to get some more folks in. No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, but there's coming a time where the earth can't stand too much more sin. The world is calling what's right wrong, and what's wrong right. They've justified everything that's wrong and caused the church as an institution to even question what Jesus said. The appearing is coming. That's all I got. I done did everything I ever want to do in this life. I got nothing else left to do but to be a servant to God and to try to recruit and get as many people saved, as, po as many as possible. And we are having record numbers of people getting born again, coming out of darkness into the marvelous light. It's happening. He's coming. He's coming. Lord, have mercy. My God. Almost here. Finally get to see him. Don't you get so busy working for God that you forget to know God. Amen. Like what Taffy said, crazy busy. Finally get to see him. We're going to see and experience things that our minds could have never fathomed. I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to praise him. And anytime you allow the enemy to use your mistakes, just keep, just say, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect, but I am grateful that I am forgiven. Amen. He's coming back. And I know for some of you, it's just so like, man, I'm trying to stay here, but every time you have a moment in the presence of God, it's like, oh, Lord. And sometimes loved ones go away and you don't even know what happened. You, you never even thought of the fact that they might have got a glimpse. It's hard to back up when you get a glimpse. I know I did. It happened to me. I can never forget it. And I've spent almost, almost 21 years. I could never forget it. I can't get it out of my head, what I saw and what I heard. Whew. He will appear. And you will be ready. You will be ready. Some of you are already ready. And boy, when we get to heaven and all the world changes nation come together. Oh, but until that time, I got to cry loud like a trumpet. I got to preach what some won't preach no more because they say it's outdated. Nah. I'll preach it. You'll preach it. We'll preach it. And you're going to be glad you're going to be so glad that you made the one decision. Think of that. Live a whole life and can't even make the one decision that matters. 
one decision. You have a whole life to accept the forgiveness of God. Think of that. To accept the payment and the ransom for your sins. A whole life. Do you know, you know how deceived you got to be? For 50, 60, 70 years, deny the only thing that can help you when you die. And yet there are millions who have concluded by the voice of fools that there is no God and I don't believe in none of this. Well, we got a problem. But you ain't seen nothing yet. For I will prophesy this, that there's about to be a great gathering that men from the north, the south, the east, and the west will have such a hunger for Jesus that they will be crying, running to an altar. There'll be people getting saved in public places. There will be angelic manifestations that will increase like never before. You will think you're talking to a person and you'll be talking to an angel. Somebody said, that ain't scripture. The Bible says, be careful when you entertain strangers because you might be entertaining angels and doing it unaware. It's about to increase. The anointing on your life is about to increase. Family members are about to come to the end of themselves. Yeah. God will get the glory. It looks like the devil's winning, but he's not. Because in a second, he can turn it all around. And let me tell you right now, he's turning it all around. There's a remnant, there's a remnant that's been tucked away for a last day. This will be the greatest move of the Holy Ghost that this earth has ever seen. Scripture, when sin abounds, when sin increases, grace will increase. I don't have to go to bed and wonder if what I said will happen. I know that I know in my knower because I know him. I've traded my knowledge about him in for knowing him. It ain't play church no more. It's I know him. I talk to him and he talks to me and leads and guides. There are difficult days ahead for those who won't submit in their faith to the promises that Jesus has made you. But those of you who will submit to that, a thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, you world changers are Psalms 91 equipped. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your Psalms 91 equipped. You got to know, you got to know there's a reason we've been saying that for all these months. Something's coming. But it won't hurt you. Lift your hands up and just worship God. If you're at home, lift your hands up and just worship God. To him who sits on the throne, to the almighty God, the bomb of Gilead, the rock of ages, to our mighty King and our Savior, we give you praise. We give you praise. Just let him minister to you right now as you minister to him. We're not asking for anything, Lord. We just praise you. We praise you. We praise you. 
we praise you. We praise you, God. We give more of ourselves to you. We've been asking more of you, but we give more of ourselves to you. We praise you. We praise you, God. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're here today, and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, You got a whole lifetime to do it, but you can make it happen now. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never invited him in to be your Lord and personal Savior, I want to pray a prayer. And if you'll just whisper the prayer out loud with me as we go, I want to lead you into the throne of heaven. I want to lead you into salvation. If you're online and you probably don't even know why you're here or how you got here or why are you listening to this, God wants you saved. You were drawn by the Spirit. You know, a man can come to the Father by being drawn by the Spirit. Let's pray this prayer together. Those in the dome and those who are online, uh, Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but I repent right now of all of my sins. Forgive me, Jesus. I believe that you died and that you were raised from the dead and that you are alive forevermore. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior, and I will trust in you all the days of my life. So by faith, I declare that I am saved. I've accepted you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, if you're here today and you prayed that prayer with me, glory to God. I want you to be bold as a lion. Get out your seat. Come to this altar with me right now. And uh, we want to spend time celebrating you. If you just prayed that prayer, come on down. If you're online and you just prayed that prayer with me, I want you to, I want you to text the key word, I'm saved. That's one word to 51555. If you provide your name and your email address, we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Go to the comment section and announce you just made Jesus the Lord of your life. And everyone there out in that virtual world, celebrate with those as we have celebrated with those who are here alive today. Amen. If you're here and you've never, you know, you, 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 you say, I want to join this church today. I want to become a member of World Changes Church here in College Park. You're welcome to come down and go to the prayer room with us as well. If you're here and you believe God's calling you, isn't that so important? How about get back to where God's calling you to be? Get back. Not, not, not to all these other reasons why you go somewhere. The only reason why you should be connected to a local church is God told you to be connected to that local church. That's what that's supposed to be. Get to where he's telling you to be. God, God said to Elijah, God said to Elijah, he said, go to a certain place, and there will I meet you. Now, imagine if he just decided to just go anywhere where he wanted to go. He'd have missed his appointment. And I just believe that if we're going to live a life for Christ, then let Christ lead our lives. Let him lead our lives.
Amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah, church, hallelujah. Now, those of you who are online, we have an e-church membership. Um, there may be some stuff out there right now, but for sure, we'll, we'll take this week and make sure we're ready to go so we can have the same altar call for those of you who are online. And we are thanking God for what he is doing. Amen. At this time, if you'll follow this gentleman here to the prayer room, they're going to take you, give you some information, get some information, make sure that you're covered and taken care of. And we thank God for you in Jesus' name. Now, let's go ahead and complete our worship through our giving. If you need an offering envelope, if you'll lift your hands up, the ushers will get one into your hands. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to have some teaching on this, but our giving is an act of worship. It's not a rubbing on the lamp to try to get the genie to come out. That's not what that's about. I will have a closed meeting for our members only. I should have did this 30 years ago, but I didn't know no better. But there's some things God has shown me about giving that uh, it's all about worship. It's not about let me give so God can do this for me. No, God's already done everything he's going to ever do for you. And you receive that by faith. But it should be a celebration of gift giving to the one who has done amazing things for us. But what God did promise us is he says, if you do decide to give, he said, I will multiply what you give. So he can't multiply what you don't give. He can only multiply what you do give. But what I was doing, I was praising the Lord this morning, and I'm, 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 I'm Taff and I are aware of this, that we start thinking about what he's done and how he's kept us and how he's healed us and how he's delivered us. And I go and make my offer now because it's a gratitude. It is, it is me saying, God, may I worship you with gifts. This will never be enough of what you've done, but I am so motivated to give my best because you have always given your best. And I'm thankful for understanding giving now. I'm thankful for understanding all of these weird things that we have taught, and even I've taught some things in the past that I, I absolutely despise. Tear the tape up, burn it. <laughs> Coming Come into his courts with thanksgiving. Give glory to the Lord. Amen. Bring an offering and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Amen. And the great thing about it is you give out of your heart. You must decide in your heart what to give. And whatever it is, God said, I'll multiply it. I give because I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And I'm so amazed at what he's done for me. I'm so in love with him, and my love becomes a, a reflex. My giving becomes a reflex of my love for him. For God so loved the world that he gave. It's a reflex. And once we get our understanding of what proper giving is, you'll never have a problem with it again, and you'll see results. I don't give to get. I give because of what he's already done. Abraham gave to God, not to get God to give him the victory. He had the victory before he gave the gift. Huh. I'm already blessed. And because he's already blessed me, I give a gift. I'm healed. I'm excited. I'm saved. I'm going to give a gift. I want to give a gift to this man who has done so much for me. That now becomes my motivation for giving, not treating him like a genie in a lamp. If you're online and you want to give through text, just text world changers, the amount, excuse me, world changes space, and then the amount to 74483. If you're at home, you can 
dial 1-866-477-7683 to give. Someone will assist you. If you want to mail in from home, you can do so with that address. And if you want to go online, you can go to worldchanges.org or creplodollarministries.org and give online. If you have a PayPal account, you can use it there. If you're here, you can give through the text, but if you want to use our QR code, you can just take your phone, uh, take a picture of that, and it'll take you directly to the text to give. All you have to do is put your amount and hit send. If you're not quite sure what to do, there's some information outside in the lobby to help you out to do what you need to do. If you have an offering envelope, we'll receive those in just a moment. We're examining everything we do at this ministry. We're examining every department. That's why they're not all available right now because I want to put my eyes and ears on every bit of it. Certain things are not essential like they used to be. Certain things we're doing maybe was good for 30 years ago, but it ain't no, I don't, I don't need it now. There are other more important essential things that need to be put in place. And so thank you for being patient with us as we slowly integrate some of these things into place where they need to be. Some, we, some, some situations where we need to change leaders. They were great for 20 years and I want to continue to pastor you, but we can't be afraid to cut people off. You think that's a bad thing, it's not. <laughs> so that's all I got to say about that but anyway we want to make sure that we are in a position where God wants us to be so that he can do what he needs to do and I would suggest you do the same thing in your life there's some relationships in your life that, that's keeping you down you're still stuck in the same old toxic relationship with old Waldo for the last 20 years and y'all ain't married yet. Obviously, Waldo don't want to get married to you. Let Waldo go and go find you a Herman, somebody who's ready to... <laughs> I'm just playing. If you're ready to give, us just go ahead and let's receive the offering here and let everybody out. And uh, as you give, man, just give with that gratitude and that attitude of thanksgiving. Look at what God has done. Give with that attitude and gratitude of appreciation for what God has done. And be grateful and thankful that the God of all grace, the God of all mercy and grace is available to you today. Those of you who are streaming in online, if you have not registered for the Grace Life Convention, you can text Grace Life to 51555 and be a part of our audience. And we will be having meetings on Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, and Friday night. Taffy and I will be doing this year's meetings. And we're going to be dealing with some pretty important foundational pieces on grace. If your foundation is destroyed, then what can the righteous do? And we want to make sure that we've not gotten so far away from foundations that we're just kind of dibbling around out there. And so we're pretty excited about this. And Wednesday, we started a series on the reality of heaven and hell. I taught on hell last Wednesday. This week, we'll teach on heaven. And in light of what we heard today, it's pretty exciting. I got one of the wildest Wednesday night crowds I think I have ever, ever seen. Seriously, they get to shouting in that chapel. It startled me one time. I, I was like, because you're not used to people there. And then when they got to screaming, I'm thinking, what's, what's, what's wrong? What's going on? And it's just, it's so good. It's so good. And I'm so grateful and so thankful for, for you all. Well, God bless you. We're done. If all hearts and minds are clear, <laughs> you can stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. The, uh, the, uh, continue to be patient with us on the lobby. We got a lot more stuff to do put in there. It'll get better and better and better. And when it's finished, I'll let you know. But there's so much more that we got to do to it to make things happen. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Here's the final blessing. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that a hundredfold will hit every person at the sound of my voice. You are a good God, and that goodness right now is, is causing their lives to change their mind and to see things that they thought they would never see before. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives and over their families. I declare that there will be no lack, Lord Jesus. You are our storehouse. And Father, I thank you not only for divine protection, but I thank you for divine wisdom in their lives. 
and I declare the blessing of peace over them this week. I declare that the favor of God is working for them right now. And I thank you, Lord, that the favor of God now go ahead of them to divinely arrange things on their behalf before they even arrive. I declare that this congregation be blessed and that that blessing is working in them, on them, for them, and through them. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day.